Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Lady in the Dark, starring Ginger Rogers and Ray Milan. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer for tonight, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, in the absence of my good friend, Cecil B. DeMille, I'm going to act as your producer. I'm especially glad to have a hand in bringing one of the screen's most entertaining and sophisticated comedies, Paramount's Lady in the Dark. Adapted from the Broadway stage success produced by Sam H. Harris and Moss Hart. In the next hour, you'll see what happens to a girl who can't make up her mind. A girl who is pulled and twisted by her inner dream, bewildered by her own success, and, and pressed by impatient suitors for a hand. You will hear, too, music by Kurt Weil and Ira Gershwin. I don't want to go beyond that. Except to add that our stars tonight are more than equal to the roles assigned to them. First, because they played in the original screen version. And second, because they're a combination you'll find hard to beat in Hollywood. Ginger Rogers and Ray Milan. They've been on this stage together once before. And I'm sure you share the hope they'll be on many times again. Now... Of course, the meaning of tonight's title, Lady in the Dark, is a lady who's in the dark about herself, and not a lady in the dark about Lux Toilet Soap. Although they may be one and the same thing, a lady who isn't sure of her appearance may prefer a dim light, while a woman with a captivating, smooth complexion wouldn't choose to stay in darkness very long. Now, if you recall your Latin, you'll remember the word lux means light. So if by any chance you are a lady in the dark yourself, perhaps the easiest solution to your problem is lux toilet soap. And now our curtain rises on the first act of tonight's play, Lady in the Dark, starring Ginger Rogers as Liza Elliott and Ray Miland as Charlie Johnson. most modern suite of offices in New York's most modern skyscraper is occupied by America's most modern fashion magazine. This glossy journal of elegance is called Allure, and its equally sophisticated editor is called Liza Elliott. Liza's a little late for work this morning, and the reason is a rather disturbing interview she's just had with her family doctor. Hello, Foster. Oh, uh, Dr. Harris just phoned. Well, I just met Dr. Harris. But he said he forgot to take Dr. Brooks' address and you were to see him. Dr. Brooks is a psychoanalyst. I refuse to see him. I told Dr. Harris that. It's perfectly ridiculous. All right, let's get to work. Yes, Miss Elliot. Oh, Mr. Russell wants to see you right away. And those dresses where the photograph just came in. Mm -hmm. There are three people waiting outside to see you. Liza, you've got to do something. You've simply got to do something. All right, Russell, what now? I'm in a frenzy. A frenzy. Either he leaves or you'll get another boy to shoot your picture. He who? Who, she asked me. Mr. Charlie Johnson, that's who. Last night, when I should be shooting pictures, Johnson takes out all the models. Two of them haven't even shown up yet. And the others... Bags under their eyes down to here. Please, Russell, do the best you can. I am so mad I could spit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two. Uh, oh, good morning, Maggie. Hi, Liza. Come in, Maggie. Well, what's this? Oh, an apple. So well, that's what I thought. One of Mr. Johnson's clever jokes. An apple for the teacher. Maggie, if Johnson weren't the best advertising man in the business, I swear it. Hello, Maggie. You want a gooey kiss? Why don't you stop being a pixie? I was hoping the boss did. He would have a minute. Look here, Johnson. I just saw Russell. If you've got to take out models, try Harper's Bazaar. And be disloyal to the home team? Never. We won't discuss it any further. 
You know, when I was in the third grade, Miss Compton used to make me stand in the corner. If you've got business to talk over, get to the point. <laughs> Boss lady, you kill me. It's just a matter of our next issue. I've got a great idea. A circus number. Cover, layout, articles, everything. All a la circus. Our next issue is the Easter anniversary issue. Yeah, I know. But just for fun, I had the art department work up a dummy. Here, look. Isn't that swell, huh? A circus theme isn't even remotely right for a fashion magazine. Anything's right if it brings in the ads. I'll go downtown and sound out the department stores. You'll do nothing without my okay. Oh? And when do you suppose I might get that? When I'm ready, I'll send for you. You'll... Well, what do you know? What? <laughs> Your suit. Just like mine. We must go to the same tailor. You! <clears throat> the paperweight. Always wanted to have a paperweight. Thanks, boss lady. <laughs> Oh, Maggie, come on in. Close the door. Now, look here, Charlie. What are you trying to do to Liza? Nothing at all. She's just sore because I'm wise to her. Wise about what? Did you ever see a brick house that really isn't made of bricks? The bricks are just painted on? Well, that's Liza Elliott and that big executive pose of hers. Every time I get close to her, I can't resist chipping off little hunks to see what's underneath. Well, you can just cut it out. Liza's not feeling well. And you'll be decent to her, do you hear? Well, why doesn't she quit? A publisher's in love with her. Why doesn't she marry him? You know as well as I do that Kendall Nesbitt's married, and he can't get a divorce, so shut up. She can still quit. I've had my eye on that job of hers ever since I came here. A girl like Liza shouldn't try to be top man. She's not built for it. What she should really do... Never is... mind. I know your views. <clears throat> you want me to apologize to boss lady? You wouldn't. Besides, she's gone home. Well, good night, you stinker. Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> Kendall, come in. Hello, darling. Oh, I thought you'd gone to that publisher's dinner tonight. I have, but I wanted to find out what the doctor had to tell you. Oh. I'm a very disappointing medical case. It's all in my mind. There's nothing wrong. No. Well, then what are you worrying about? Mm-hmm. Worrying? I'm not worrying. You were just humming, and when you start humming, dear, you're worried. I know. Why, that's silly. (laughs) Oh, no, dear, it isn't. You are worried, Liza. And I know why. Whatever's wrong with you, it's... Well, it's all my fault. Liza, darling, when I think of the life that we might have had... Darling, please. I should bow out of your life if I didn't love you so much. If I weren't so completely selfish. Oh, don't say that. Don't ever say that. It's true, Liza. You mean everything in the world to me. And what can I be to you? A companion who takes you to dinner, someone to talk to, your boss on the magazine. What kind of a life is that for you? General, I'm perfectly happy, and I, I, I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you, Liza, but I still think I'm right. Well, darling... See you tomorrow at the office? Sure, and try and get some sleep tonight, hmm? I'll try, dear. Good night, Liza. Good night. yourself, Miss Elliot. Dr. Carlton mentioned something about nervousness. Nervousness? No, no. It's more than that, Dr. Brooks. It's, well, it's fear. All day long, I'm in a kind of panic. Ever think of stopping work? Oh, I couldn't. The magazine's the only steadying influence I have. Except now I... Well, I'm beginning to slip. I can't make decisions over the simplest thing. What about you and Mr. Nisbet? Oh. Oh, I see no point in being schoolgirlish about this. Mr. Nesbitt's been in love with me for some time. We can't get married because his wife won't get him a divorce. Look, I came here hoping you'd be able to help me. Do you think you can? Perhaps. I'd like a trial analysis for a month, starting now. Oh, but that's impossible. I'll be terribly busy for the next few days. And... I see. Well, in that case, perhaps you should find someone else. 
All right, you win. What do I do? It's going to sound foolish, but I want you to lie down over there and start talking. Just say anything at all that comes to mind. And meanwhile, you'll get into your beard, I trust. Start talking. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about a song. A song I knew as a child. It's been running through my head all day. I even dreamed about it last night. Oh? What kind of a dream? I was all alone in a vast misty cloud. And all around me was the song. I was dressed in blue, a blue gown. The most beautiful gown I've ever seen. In it, I felt so light, intoxicated. I, I thought I was the loveliest creature on earth. Does the color blue mean anything to you? Well, that's just it. I really dislike blue intensely. Anyway, in my dream, I heard cheering and applause in the distance. The mist suddenly disappeared, and I was standing on a huge stage. I had just made a speech. The cheers and applause were all for me. I was the center of attraction. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, how lovely to be me. If there's a party, I'm always the host of it. If there's a haunted house, I'm always the ghost of it. If I'm in town, I'm always the toast of it. Oh, how lovely to be me. <laughs> A message, a message. Who bears a message? I do. I, Mr. Charlie Johnson. A message to Eliza Elliott from the President of the United States. And? The President requests that for national unity and for the advancement of cultural achievement... Yes? ...that your portrait be painted for the new two-stand stamp of the U.S. of A. Oh, how really, really lovely. Who is to paint me and where? I am to paint you and here. In this dress? Like this. Exactly. The most beautiful woman on earth. And I'll paint you in three strokes of my brush. Like this. And thusly and so. Look, multitude. Look, admiring throng. The portrait is finished. Here is a true picture of Liza Elliott. It's a caricature. It's a caricature. Is it? <laughs> What's the matter, boss? Daddy, can't you take it? Go away. Go away! Go away! I woke up sobbing, shaking. Well, Miss Elliot, it appears that in your dream you were just the opposite of your real self. Opposite? Obviously, you're a girl who cares little for feminine adornments. And yet in the dream, you were glamorous, seductive. Dreams often are wish fulfillments. But I haven't the faintest desire to be glamorous. You never wanted to be that alluring woman? Never. The only thing I ever wanted was to make something of myself. Most girls want love and marriage. Well, I didn't. And I despised girls who did. Why? I don't remember. Oh, you don't want to remember? Which? I simply don't know. Well, I think we've done enough for one visit. And uh, that's all there is to it? For the moment, yes. I'll call you soon. Thank you. I... <laughs> Good night, Doctor. happen to have the time, Miss Elliot? It's uh, 20 minutes after 3. Oh? I thought our staff meeting was set at 3. It was. Foster! Foster! Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Elliot. I've just been in Mr. Russell's office. And what's so important in Mr. Russell's office? Why, Miss Elliot, Randy Curtis is there getting photographed. Everybody's there. Then you'll kindly tell everybody that I called a staff meeting for 3 o'clock and I intend to have a staff meeting. Yes, Miss Elliot. Are you kidding Nobody's going to get any work done with Randy Curtis here. He's a movie star. Oh, we've had celebrities here before. Incidentally, what about my circus idea? I've been to the department store, and they like it very much. We'll talk about that at the staff meeting, if there is such a thing. Now, you wait here. I'll be back. In uh-huh. The... That's what you think. And as far as the rest of you are concerned, get back to your desks immediately. I'm thoroughly ashamed of you. I'm terribly sorry this has happened, Mr. Curtis. I, I'm sure that you'll think they've never seen a movie star before. Oh, it's okay. I'm used to it by now. Oh, uh, this is Miss Elliot, Mr. Curtis. Our editor. Yes, I know. You know? You don't remember? Oh. Mrs. Brackett's cocktail party about a year ago. Oh, why, of course. We're going to have dinner sometime. We uh, still could, you know. Well, I think that might be very nice sometime. Oh, Mr. Curtis. Yes? 
Mr. Curtis, may I have your autograph? <laughs> Look, you're kidding. Oh, no, no. I save all sorts of things. Autographs, paperweights. I put them in a memory box, and on rainy afternoons, I just sit and look at them. <laughs> Please? <laughs> okay. Here, for stormy weather. Gee, thanks. Oh, Mr. Curtis, telephone for you. I'll be right there. Excuse me, Miss Elliot. Yes, of course. Dream lover, put your arms around me. <laughs> Boss lady, sometimes you kill me. I don't like you, Johnson, and I never have. And I'm definitely repelled by what you consider amusing. And if you can't confine your remarks to your work, perhaps you can make more pleasant connections elsewhere. My, my, my. Liza! Oh, Liza! Well, uh, publisher. Liza, could I see you alone for a moment? Oh, hello, Johnson. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kendall, we're supposed to have a staff meeting now. I'll only be a moment, dear. Let's go out on the terrace. Just be careful, Nesbitt. Teach us mad. <laughs> Don't worry. This isn't business. Oh, I changed my mind. I didn't go to the dinner last night. I determined to see Catherine and settle this one way or another. Well, Liza, she's agreed to a divorce. A divorce? Yes. That's what we've been waiting for, Liza. It's... Why, Liza, dear, what's the matter? Nothing, can you? It's just wonderful. Oh, darling, why don't you get out of this office and go home? You're not well. Johnson and Maggie can get out the magazine. Please, I... I'm all right. I thought you'd be glad to hear the news. Oh, but I am. It's just that oh, I... Oh, well, Oh, Miss Elliot, I... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, it's quite all right. Uh, Randy Curtis, uh, Kendall Nesbitt. Oh, how do you do? How are you? We were talking about having dinner, Miss Elliot. How about tomorrow night? Well, I, I think tomorrow night might be fine. You'll have to call for me here, though, Mr. Curtis. I'll be working rather late. Well, that's okay. Uh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you can make it. Well, uh, goodbye again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Nesbitt. Bye. Uh... Like me to leave now, too? Would you mind, dear? Work, huh? Uh, yes, that meeting. Sure. Just wait till we're married, darling, and you'll be able to forget all about staff meetings and movie actors and deadlines and everything. Except me, I hope. Kendall, you're the sweetest man that ever lived. Just try to put up with me a little longer, won't you? Please, just a little longer. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. Barrymore and our stars will return in Act Two of Lady in the Dark. And now, two young girls comparing notes. First, they're awfully important, aren't they, Anne? What do you mean by first, Rita? I mean those things you always remember. Like your first day in high school or the first time you went to a dance. Oh, yes, and your first evening dress. And your first pair of high heel shoes. And remember the first time you wore makeup? Wasn't I thrilled when I got my first lipstick? My mother was pretty smart, though. She showed me just how to take the right care of my skin. She certainly must have. Your complexion always looks so nice and smooth. Mother told me how important it is to remove stale cosmetics from your skin. She said never, never go to bed without taking an active lather facial with Lux soap. Then you know your skin will keep on looking fresh and smooth. What's an active lather facial, Rita? It's so easy to take. You cover your face with lots of the Lux soap lather. It's so creamy and rich. Then you rinse with warm water, splash on cold. And then you just pat your skin dry with a soft towel. Try it, Anne. It really works. There's no doubt about it. Regular beauty facials with gentle Lux toilet soap really do make skin lovelier. Recent tests proved that actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time with this daily care. Active lather facials are Hollywood's beauty care, you know. Famous screen stars, nine out of ten of them, depend on this fine soap's creamy active lather to help keep their million-dollar complexions exquisitely smooth. Why don't you try active lather facials? Ask for Hollywood Beauty Soap, Lux Toilet Soap, tomorrow. And now, Mr. Barrymore returns to the microphone. Act two of Lady in the Dark, starring Ginger Rogers as Liza and Ray Miland as Charlie. <laughs> sudden news that Kendall Nesbitt soon would be free to marry her leaves Liza Elliott in a state of complete jitters. Not even sleep brings any relief. After hours of tossing, she finally dozes off, plunging straightway into a highly fanciful dream. 
so disturbing a dream that she's now back in Dr. Brooks' office, telling the psychoanalyst all about it. The dream was grotesque, fantastic, but it seemed so terribly real. The people were singing the procession. Procession? A wedding procession. It was my wedding day. Dozens of men were crowding around the mass, around, around about me, laughing, dancing, flirting men. Again, the center oh. of attraction. The beautiful, glamorous woman. Presently, all the men vanished. But one, he put his arms around me. He made love to me. It was Randy Curtis. You resented his lovemaking? No. No, I didn't. Then suddenly I found myself in front of an altar. In back of it, grinning at me, was one of the men from the magazine, an especially annoying person named Johnson. Well, what was he doing? Well, he seemed to be a judge or a minister. I looked around for Randy, but he was gone. Another man was standing there, stretching his hand out to me. It was Kendall Nesbitt. Then the people began chanting, and they said I, I wasn't the true Liza Elliot. They, they demanded that I tell the truth. Tell the truth. Oh, it was awful. I started to run away, and they, they laughed at me. And then it all turned misty and... Blurred. I woke up, shaking as usual. I'm still shaking. You told me, Miss Elliot, that Mr. Nesbitt is getting a divorce. Yes. Had you ever been aware before now that you did not want Mr. Nesbitt to get a divorce? How did you... Not very clever, Dr. Brooks. No, I was never aware of it before, but it's, it's true. You mentioned an engagement with Mr. Curtis tonight. Yes, but I'm going to call it off. Why? Why? I have the slightest desire to keep it. In your dream, you're ready to marry him. Yet now you reject him. That's a rather curious denial. Is it? Also in your dream, you suddenly see it is not Randy Curtis at your side, but Nesbitt. And immediately the mocking voices of the people are heard. They taunt you. Your dream becomes a nightmare and you run away. Yes. Miss Elliot, hasn't your affection for Kendall Nesbitt been based on the fact that he resembles your father? My father. I've never mentioned my father. But you have, in fact, transferred your love for your father to Nesbitt. And as long as he remained married, you were safe. Safe? Safe from what? Safe from competition with other women. But the moment you were faced with becoming his wife... Well, that's horrible. That's not true. Yes. You're afraid to compete with other women. Even the plain way you dress is a protective armor. And with it, you are not forced to compete. I loathe fancy clothes. Your dreams deny it. Those are dreams and your interpretations of them. Nothing else. I think you'll find the interpretations are true. I refuse to go on with this. Thank you, Dr. Brooks. You can send me a bill for whatever I owe you. Good day. Oh, boss lady. You got a minute now, maybe? Can it wait, Johnson? Well, it waited all morning, then it waited all afternoon. Now it's six o'clock. Where have you been? I've been out. Oh. Well, the big stores like my circus idea. They'll really splurge on ads. And me? Well, I'd like, I'd like to leave your magazine in a blaze of glory. Leave? Yeah. This might be turned my resignation, boss lady. But please, no tears. Just a light kiss on the cheek, perhaps, and a quick goodbye, huh? You're certainly thin-skinned, aren't you? For me? Because I... Because you bored me out? Oh, no. I just got a better offer. I'll meet that offer. Why? I annoy the life out of you, don't I? That has nothing to do with the way you do your job. Look, it isn't a question of money. Actually, I'm taking less. But I'm getting something I could never get here. Your job. I'm afraid that's what I want. Well, it's nice of you to be so frank. Yeah. I'm ambitious, too. I want to run the whole thing myself, and there isn't a chance of that here. You married that desk of yours years ago, and you're never going to get a divorce. You have magazines instead of babies. Why? You insolent pup. I'm sick and tired of that incredible sideshow you put on under the guise of a gay young man with a wicked tongue. It doesn't always excuse your being an ill-mannered boor, and I question if that isn't the extent of your talent. <laughs> Rage is a pretty good substitute for love, isn't it? Get out of here! Yes, ma'am. Oh, if we should ever need a good man over there, I'll make you an offer. Liza. Well, hello, Kendall. I just passed Johnson. He said you were back. Darling, where have you been? I've been searching for you all day. I've been to a psych psychoanalyst. What? To the eminent Dr. Brooks. I stood just about all I could stand, and then I walked out on him. And I kept walking and walking and walking. 
Liza, be honest with me, will you? Yes. You don't want to marry me. That's true, isn't it? Can you... There's someone else. No, no, no. Oh, I can't explain it to you. I, I can't even explain it to myself. Oh, Kendall, I'm sick. I'm ill. I know you're real, Liza, but you're going to be well again. And you haven't the right to trifle with other people's lives, even with this as an excuse. <laughs> All right. All right, what am I going to do? Stop acting like a child. Don't talk to me like that. I'm fighting as hard as I know how. Listen to me, Liza. I can't stand aside while you proceed to destroy something very important to me. All right. All right. Come back later, then. I'll get through as soon as I can. But don't push me into a corner, Kendall. It's no use. I'm going to fight, Liza. I love you, and I can't help that. Can I? Foster! Yes, sir. Come here. I've got a million things to do. I want Allison's galleys right away and send in Russell. Oh, well, uh, what will I tell Mr. Curtis? Mr. Curtis, oh. Oh, I forgot to call him. He said you have a dinner engagement with him. Oh, yes, yes, I know. Oh, say, is he something in white tie and tail? Oh, uh, send him in, please. Uh, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, Morley. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No, it's my fault, Mr. Curtis. I've, <laughs> I've just been snowed under. I haven't even had a chance to change. Say, you know what? What? Let's go out just as you are. Just as I am? Sure. Oh, you look wonderful. Oh, to tell the truth, I was scared stiff. I was going to run into a glamour girl tonight instead of... Instead of what, Mr. Curtis? Oh, please. Randy. Well, instead of... Well, as you are now. You're natural. You don't know what a relief it is to find a natural girl. Thank you. But just the same, I am going to dress. And uh, I can do it right here. Now, if you don't mind waiting outside... Oh, why, why, sure. I'll wait and take your time. Yes? Maggie, do you have those sample dresses from Bergdorf? Liza? Yes, sure. Uh, Send them in, hmm? Yes, but I simply don't have... I was scared stiff, he said. Scared stiff I was going to run into a glamour girl... Just as I am, he says. He likes me just as I am. Liza Elliot, what's the matter with you? Nothing, darling. I'm just going out. Out with Mr. Curtis. Randy Curtis? Yes, ma'am. And you can get the magazine to press, Maggie. I'll show Dr. Brooks who's afraid. You realize, Randy, that in three hours we've been to six nightclubs. Well, I thought that you were... Oh, no, I'm having a wonderful time. Uh, No, you're not. And we haven't been alone for two minutes. Oh, you are moving but you start. Too many people know you. Oh, Mr. Curtis. <laughs> Here we go again. Yes? Would you mind, Mr. Curtis, just one picture, please? <sighs> Liza. Oh, by all means, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a little closer to the young lady, please. Yeah, that's fine. Hold it. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Curtis. Uh, Liza, this may not be the place. Not the time, maybe, either, but I'd like to talk to you. You talk very nicely, Mr. Curtis. Well, I, uh, I might as well come straight to the Sorry, point. Mr. Curtis, would you mind a few autographs? Oh, sure, sure, glad to. Uh, for a party from Boise, Idaho. <laughs> Does this go on all the time, day and night? <laughs> well, I have to laugh. Three years ago, nobody would give me a job. Now I'm in with all the big shots. Writers ask me to read their books. Businessmen ask me about the market. Oh, here you are. And uh, here's your pencil. Thanks very much, Mr. Curtis. And I even get a chance to meet you. <laughs> Randy, you're very endearing. <laughs> Liza, it, uh... It isn't just this, my being in the movies, that made you come with me tonight. No, Randy. Well, well, that's swell. I, uh, I really came to prove something to myself. Do I figure in that something? Yes. Liza, I know you've known me only a couple of days, but it doesn't take time to know that a person is the only person you want to be with. From the first time I saw you a year ago, well, I'm crazy about you. Randy, I... I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Well, I, I know you couldn't feel the way I do. Not yet. But do you think you could think about it? I think so. Oh, gosh, Liza. I... Oh. Randy. Hello. I thought you went back to the coast. I'm leaving tomorrow. Oh, uh, this is Miss Liza. Hello. Hello. But, darling, that's wonderful. So am I. Oh, you know Charlie Johnson? I am. Good evening. Miss Elliot, you look wonderful. Thank you, Johnson. You know, this is the first time I've ever seen you like this. 
Actually like a woman. Now, what does that mean, Charlie? Oh, Randy, I saw Marie yesterday. And a sheep bird. You really shouldn't be so mean. Well, I, uh... Hey, Alan, come on. Just a second. Excuse me. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, sure, sure. Eliza. What? I know you don't like me because I want your job. I know you don't like her because she wants your man. Oh, uh, Randy, what time is it? Why, what's early? 11.30. 11.30? I really must go. I have work to do. Work? Oh, couldn't you forget it, Liza? Just this once. I don't think she could ever forget it, Mr. Curtis. Randy, I, I really must go home. Home? Thought it was work. What is it, Liza? Are you all right? Well, it's nothing. Uh, maybe I'm just a little tired. Please, you, you don't mind. Oh, of course not. Well, good night, all. Good night. What's the matter, boss lady? Can't you take it? What's he talking about? Oh, nothing, nothing. Eliza, if your work won't take too long, maybe we could... Randy, if you don't mind, I'd like to go home alone. Well, sure, if you want. Eliza, will I see you tomorrow? I'll be leaving, you know. Yes, call me, won't you? And you will think about what I said before? Oh, I will, Randy. I think in a way that's why I won't be alone. Thanks, Eliza. Well, good night. Good night, Randy. for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a moment, Mr. Barrymore and our stars will return with Act Three of Lady in the Dark. Busy days these are for women everywhere. For women who work in offices... Oh, goodness, I'll never get this report card. No, Miss Brown is out today. Oh, yes, I'll give her the message. Yes, Mr. Adams. A reservation to Washington? I'll start phoning now. Yes, I'll be sure to finish the report, too. For women who work at home... All right, darling, I'm coming right away. Now, Bobby, be still while I give little sister her supper. Oh, heavens, I never knew children could make so much noise. Strenuous trying days for women everywhere. But thousands of them have learned this secret. Mmm, thank goodness for this nice, relaxing bath. Flock soap gives such rich, creamy lather. Mmm, so fragrant, too. It's a real beauty pickup. Yes, Lux Soap's active lather whisks away the day's dust and dirt in a jiffy. Leaves skin really fresh and sweet. Makes me sure of daintiness. Screen stars discovered long ago that their complexion soap, Lux Toilet Soap, makes a truly luxurious beauty bath. This fine white soap has a light flower-like perfume that appeals to fastidious women. Lux Toilet Soap is hard-milled. It's inexpensive to use because it lasts and lasts. Why not try using it as a daily bath soap? You'll enjoy the rich, luxurious lather, the lovely, clinging fragrance Lux soap leaves on your skin. And now, Mr. Barrymore returns to the microphone. After the play, we won't exactly psychoanalyze our two stars, but we will present some searching questions on their private lives. And I think you'll want to hear their answers, too. Now, Act Three of Lady in the Dark, starring Ginger Rogers as Liza and Ray Miland as Charlie. An hour ago, Liza Elliott entered her apartment, put on her glasses, and dived into a pile of papers representing the Easter issue of a new magazine. For a while, she forgot all about Randy Curtis and Kendall Nesbitt and Charlie Johnson. But now Liza's yawning. Her eyelids are fluttering. Her pencil drops from her fingers. The editor of a Your magazine is fast asleep, and presently she dreams a dream. It's true, Miss Elliot. You don't dare compete as a woman. You don't dare. No. No. Liza, I don't expect you to answer now, but do you think you could think about it? No, I will. I will, Randy. It's my resignation, boss lady. 
Now, what about the circus idea? Come on, decide, decide. Decide, decide, decide. Decide on the cover. You've got to, you've got to. The Easter cover or the circus cover. The Easter cover or the circus cover. Not only at the circus, I'm in the circus. In a cage. I'm in a cage. Hey, let me out of here. Let me out of here. Well, what's that? Clown. Oh, please, clown. Let me out of here. Well, ma'am, I'm going to the judge. Here you say that, young lady. Judge? He holds you in contempt of court. Are you crazy? I demand to be taken out of here. Quiet down now. Trial's going to begin. Trial's going to begin. Quiet, please. Stop the band. Attention, everybody. Attention. Ladies and gentlemen. Johnson. Charlie Johnson, dressed like a ringmaster. I take pride in introducing the greatest show on earth, featuring for the first time the captivating and tantalizing Liza Elliott, the woman who cannot make up her mind. <laughs> Ordering the court, the charges against Liza Elliott. What is all this? The charges against me for what? Liza Elliott cannot make up her mind about the Easter cover or the circus cover. Liza Elliott cannot make up her mind whether she is marrying Kendall Nesbitt or not. Liza Elliott cannot make up her mind as to the kind of woman she wants to be. The executive or the enchantress. Therefore, let Liza Elliott be brought to trial and made to make up her mind. I am the attorney for the prosecution. My worthy opponent, where is he? Introducing a standing writer and attorney for the defense. Randy Tessie! Hi-ho! All right, all right. Let's get going now. Let's get going. My first witness, Your Honor, Kendall Nesbitt. Here I am. I'm here. What's the question? Mr. Nesbitt, you are divorcing your wife so you can be free to marry the defendant. Isn't that so? Yes, sir. And the defendant led you to believe she'd marry you when, as, and if. Yes, sir. Ha uh-huh. ha. What do you mean, ha ha? Tra la, I never gave my word. Tra la la, permit a change of mind. When a maid gives her heart, but does not give her word. How on earth had that maid have betrayed him? Come on. You've heard the charges. Have you made up your mind about any of these things? No, how can I? Can you give a reasonable explanation? Why not? I can't. I just can't. Stop being evasive. There must be an explanation. Let me alone. Let me alone. You see, Your Honor, she wants to be alone. (laughs) Everyone else, clear the courtroom. Everybody out. You want to be alone, Miss Elliot. All right? Be alone. Get away from her, everybody. Get away from her. Wait. Not everyone. Don't everyone leave me. Please, I'll tell you whatever. Go on. They're all gone. Hey, come back. Come back. Don't leave me here alone. Don't leave me here alone. It's getting dark and I'll miss you again. And that music. I don't want to hear it. Quit playing that music. Stop it. Oh, stop it, please. Stop, Father. Who are you calling Father? Help me, Father. Talking about this is Kendall. Father, don't let them play that. I'm not your father. What's the matter with Make you? them stop it, please. Make them stop it. Help me, Father. Help me. Hello. Dr. Brooks, please. Elliot. What? Would you give him a message, please? Tell him. Tell Dr. Brooks I apologize for my behavior this morning and tell him that I must see him again. I've got to. The morning. Uh, oh, about 10 o'clock. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And I stood there, Doctor, terrified, pleading for my father. That song all around me and no one would help me. No one. Then the dream ended and I I woke up. That was hours ago, but I, I can't seem to shake it off. And you think it was that song you heard, that lullaby that upset you so? Yes. It gave me that, that same feeling of hurt and humiliation I used to have as a child. I called it my bad feeling. Can you remember when you first had this 
Bad feeling? Yes, I was about six years old. One night, my mother and father were going out. Some men came to the house to call for them, and my father brought me downstairs to meet them. <laughs> well, here she is, everybody. Here's Liza, and she's going to sing for you. <laughs> Helen, surely that's not your child. That's what they tell me. But you're so gorgeous, and she's so... Well, what I mean is she doesn't look anything like you, and... Not like Bob, either. Well, perhaps they switch babies on you in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfectly content with Liza. One beauty in the family is enough for me. It went on and on like that. I wanted to shout, it's not true, it's not true. I am like my mother. But I just stood there. My heart broke and sobbed. We simply got to go. But Liza's going to sing, aren't you, dear? Come, darling, you remember it? My ship has sails that are made of silk. My ship has sails that are made of silk. The decks are trimmed with... <laughs> Liza, what's the matter, dear? Liza! I ran into my room. I had to get away from them from their laughter. I felt ugly and ashamed. A year later, my mother died. I wanted to cry, but I couldn't. I loved her, but the tears just wouldn't come. My poor father. I watched him sitting there by himself hour after hour. The only way I knew how to make my take my mother's place was to try to look like her, so one evening I stole into her closet and got out her blue evening gown, the one he loved the best. A blue gown. How soon? At last, I thought. I was able to do something to please her. Liza, how dare you put on that dress? Take it off at once. I had a terrible convulsive shock. Don't ever do that again. Go back to your room. Go back. My father, whom I loved completely, had turned on me. I never tried to come close to him again. As I grew up, I buried myself in my schoolwork. I made up my mind that if I couldn't be anything else, I was going to be tops in my class. I never went to parties or dances. Except one... It was graduation day. I remember I'd gone to the library. It was deserted that night except for one person. It was Ben. Ben had been chosen the handsomest boy in the class. Hello, Liza. Hello, Ben. What are you doing here? I mean, why aren't you at the dance? How about you? Oh, I... I had a headache. You want to go to the dance with me? Yes, yeah, ma'am. This is a public life. Well, um, where's Barbara, Ben? Huh? Barbara? Uh-huh. Oh, me anymore. Oh. I'm not speaking to her, and she's not speaking to me. Honest, Liza, do you think a girl should flirt all the time? Well, I imagine it's pretty difficult for Barbara not to flirt. She's so pretty. Oh, heck. If I talk about Barbara, you're much nicer. If you please. Oh, sorry. Uh, look, what do you say we drop over just for sort of last dance with the kids, huh? Well, I... I'll um, have to go home first to tell my dad. Oh, swell. Well, come on, Liza. Let's get that out of here. I really didn't have to go and tell my father. I wanted to go home just to put on my party dress. Well, Ben called for me, and we walked down the street toward the high school. You know, it's funny. What's funny, Ben? Well, it just dawned on me. You're awful pretty, Liza. Oh. Well... What's the matter? Don't you like me or something? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I do, but I... I just never thought you ever noticed me before. I guess I didn't. Not very much. Boy, I'm a sap. What's that song, Liza? What song? That song you're singing. Oh, is that singing? Yeah, well, what is it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Just something I remember. I think when I was a little child, I used to sing it. Or oh, but it's nice. Go on, sing it. Oh, Ben, I... Oh, go on. Well, all right, but I, I don't know if I remember it all. Let me see. Um, my ship has sails that are made of silk. The decks are trimmed with gold. And of jam and spice. There's a paradise in the whole lobby. My ships are glow with a million pearls, and 
of rubies fill each bare The sun sits high on a sapphire sky when my ship comes in. I can wait the years till it appears one fine day, one spring. But the pearls and such, they don't mean much if there's missing just one thing. I do not care if that day arrives, that dream may never be. If the ship I sing doesn't also bring my own true love to me. If the ship I sing doesn't also bring my own Liza, look at me. Why, Ben, you, you kissed me. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's all right, Ben. But I guess we'd better hurry up if we want to get to the dance. Yeah. I haven't had so much fun all my life. I didn't know you could dance so well, Liza. Thank you, Van. Ben? Oh, hello, Barbara. Oh, hello. Uh, Ben, could I talk to you for a minute? Well, what for? Uh, why, I... Well, I just want to talk to you, silly. I didn't know you were speaking to me. I'm not. And I think you're the rudest boy I've ever known. Oh, hey, wait a minute, Barbara. Oh, God, I say... say excuse me for a minute, will you, Liza? Hey, Barbara. Sure, Barbara. Barbara. Sure. And Ben didn't come back, did he, Miss Elliot? No, Dr. Brooks. Well, there are certainly a lot of pieces. Suppose I try to put them together. As a little girl, you convince yourself you're ugly, decidedly inferior. So you build a wall around yourself. As an older girl, you drop your defenses for one crucial moment, receive another cruel blow, and withdraw forever after as a woman. What does that mean, withdraw as a woman? You resolve never again to risk being hurt as a woman, competing against other women. You buried all your painful memories, and with them, that little song, which expresses the fulfillment of love. You proceeded to escape in a loveless world of words. But it wasn't loveless. I loved Kendall Nesbitt. No, Miss Elliot, you dominated him, just as you've attempted to dominate all men, to force all men to accept you as their superior. All right, What's the answer? Perhaps a man will dominate you. Oh. Silly, isn't it, that a grown woman should be governed by the desperate desires of her childhood? Do you agree with me? I feel better. Lots better. Do you agree with me? I don't know. I don't know. Liza this morning, Charlie? She hasn't come in yet. Oh, Maggie, wait a minute. How long have I worked here? Too long. Six years. That's a long time in a world of women. Charlie, what makes you such a heel? If you tell, tell Liza you're sorry for what you said yesterday, okay, I'll... Okay, okay. Okay what? Okay, I'll apologize. I know now I was wrong. Well? I saw her last night. I got to look at her without that brick front. Underneath, Maggie, she's quite a gal. Oh, my goodness. You suspected me for a long time, you old battle axe. You know, I'm kind of sick of trying to be cute. Yes, here's a secret. Inside, I'm as romantic as the devil. And outside? Oh, go away, Maggie. You're a hard woman. You said it. But when Liza comes in, you apologize. I promise. You're really not such a louse after all. Oh, uh, Miss Morgan. Yes? Uh, Miss Elliot's in. She'd like to see you right away. Uh, Randy Curtis is with her. Hmm. Morning, Liza. Hello, Maggie. Well, where is he? Randy? Uh-huh. Telephoning. 
Holly has been paging him all morning. Mm -hmm. And stop looking like an owl, Maggie. I just happened to meet him on the street corner after I left the doctor. Well, well, well. Yes, and I'm glad I did. You might not suspect it, Maggie, but Randy is a very domineering young man. How domineering? Brace yourself, Maggie. He's asked me to marry him. Liza! Maggie, I'm learning about someone I never knew before. Myself. It's frightening and wonderful. I'm giving up the magazine, and I'm giving up hiding and running away. When did you ever run away? Oh, lots of times. Only now I know why I ran. I wanted someone to lean on, to take care of me. Oh, Maggie, be happy for me, please. I think I've found the answer. Darling, I am happy for you. It's what I've always hoped for you. Mm, thank you, Maggie. But while you're still the boss, there are a few things I'd like you to okay. Well, just bring them in. Right away. Hello, Mag. Kendall, come in. Well, Eliza, this is it, isn't it? Between us, I mean. Yes, Kendall. I guess I've known it for a long time. But somehow, somewhere, find a place for me in your life. Will you, Liza? Kendall, you, you'll always be very, very dear to me. All this time, Liza. And in ten seconds, it's all over. Well, maybe that's the best way. I'll be seeing you. Oh, Miss Elliot, Miss Curtis is through his call. Oh, we'll send him in. Oh, Russell and Allison are having another row. And Mr. Johnson was looking for you. Let him wait. Oh, Mr. Curtis. Oh, Liza, I've got great news. Hmm? You want me to form my own producing unit? Make me the boss. Stories, production, profits, everything. Well, that sounds wonderful, Randy. I don't know anything about the picture business, but I... Oh, I've been it's... battling for it for a year. But this is what I mean, Liza. Yes? If I knew that you'd be in back of me, that... Uh -huh. Well, that, that you'd be in charge of the whole thing, just as you are here, I'd tell him yes in a minute. Would you do it, Liza? I'm not sure I understand, Randy. Oh, it's simple, darling. It just means that you'll still be the boss. Oh, Liza, I can't tell you what it means to me, knowing that I can be running to you for the rest of my life. The rest of your life. And now, just one kiss and I'll get out. Oh, I'll be back, though. Oh, gosh, thanks, Liza. Thank you, Randy. And thank you for telling me. Be back at five. Oh, hello, Mr. Curtis. Liza, I demand a showdown. An immediate showdown. Do you realize what Johnson has done to me? He deliberately took my color plate. Russell, not now. Not now. Not now. What am I supposed to do to get some attention around here? Bleed in front of you? Russell, the dog department wants to see you. Oh, that's good. That is fine. Really, I could spit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fui! I'm supposed to apologize to you, Liza, for what I said the other day. Who said so? Maggie and I. All right, Johnson. Put him up. This is the kid's last fight. Well, look, I've been thinking it over quietly, and I've decided I'm not going to apologize. I'm sorry, but I can't help it. I know I've been pretty rotten to you, Liza, and I've kicked myself for it afterwards. But there's always been that secret battle between us from the very beginning, and I've always had to win it because... Well, because I'm me, I guess. Johnson, I... Wait a I... minute, I'm not finished yet. I just wanted you to know that. And now that I'm leaving, in spite of all your shenanigans, I think you're fine. Well, I turned in the Hattie Carnegie layout to Paxton, so I guess that washes me up. Johnson, or Charlie, if I may, do me a favor. Give me back that paper wage and stay, will you? What? Look... I know all your reasons for wanting to leave, but it seems as though I'm getting a divorce from myself, and I think you ought to stick around and see the fun. What do you say? I'm sorry, but I'm sure it wouldn't work. Oh. Uh-huh, I see what you mean. Well, uh, why don't we run the magazine together? After a while, I might even step aside and... Well, that is, if you don't get too drunk with power. You mean that, Liza? Yes. And give me back that paperweight just as a token you intend to stay. Because I want you to stay very much. Here. Catch. Thanks. You got a minute? Mm-hmm. Here. Now look at this format. Uh -huh. That's the first thing I want to change. You got a layout? Yeah, right on my desk. I'll show you what I mean. Now look, instead of having the name on top... Yes. Why not put it over here? Oh, and change the type too, huh? Why not? You mentioned that yourself months ago. Oh, I know I did. Oh, just a minute. Uh, Maggie. 
I want you to see something. Honey? Uh, but look, Charlie, we can't get this ready for the Easter issue. Sure we can. We can? I've got a dummy issue in my office. Let me get it. I'll be right back. Well, oh, come in, Maggie. Oh, be nice to be, Maggie. I'm your new boss now. Would you mind telling me what the devil goes on around here? Maggie. Maggie, I almost made a great mistake. I almost twisted up my whole life all over again. You did, huh? I might have married Randy Curtis. I thought he was a refuge, a tower of strength. Well, you know the parts he plays and, and the things he does. But Maggie, he, he's just what Kendall is. He, he, he needs a mother, not a wife. But Liza, Maggie, I, I don't think you'll have to worry about Liza anymore. I think I'm going to be all right. Now, get out of here. Well, I'll be. Excuse me, Mag. Here it is. See what I mean? You see what that desk for the whole magazine? Yeah, yeah. Now, now, let me sit down here. And... I'd better sit down. What are you doing down there? Oh, just having a few laughs. Well, get up. Now, look. You put the ads back here, see? Uh-huh, yeah. On the color section up in front. Yeah. What about that? Sure. Well, it sounds dangerous, but it could be great. Oh, uh, well, go on. What did you say? I said, um, go on and, and do whatever you're going to do. Really? Well, sure. Baby, I've been waiting to do this for years. Oh, oh Liza, I... Well, this is the end. The absolute end. Throwing light on Lady in the Dark and giving us a highly entertaining hour, our thanks to Ginger Rogers and Ray Milan. Ginger, you played Liza Elliott so convincingly I could almost believe you'd known the lady. Well, Mr. Barrymore, I think there's a little bit of Liza Elliott in every girl. You mean you, you all have your secret room? Mm -hmm. When I was a little girl in Kansas City, I had a special room under the eaves that I... I used to crawl in there just to dream. What did you dream about mostly, Ginger? <laughs> what every kid dreams about, I guess. That someday I'd be able to have a soda fountain in my home. And I understand the dreams come true. Complete with trimming. Mm-hmm. You come around sometime and I'll give you a double, double chocolate soda, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you, Ray? What did you dream about at an early age? Me? Girls? <laughs> Uh, what kind of girls? You really want to know? Uh-huh. <laughs> girls with Lux Toilet Soap complexion. <laughs> hey, hey. Are hey, you sure somebody didn't put you up to saying that, Ray? Well, oh, okay. those Lux Toilet Soap complexions are no dream, Ray. They're the real thing. Yes, and you see plenty of them around Hollywood. At least in the studio where I work. What are you doing now for Metro Golden Mayor, Mr. Barrymore? Well, I just finished a picture called Between Two Women with Van Johnson. Between Two Women with Van Johnson? Yeah. <laughs> That's tough competition. <laughs> I'm making a picture at MGM with Van, too. Weekend at the Waldorf. <laughs> well, I hope we can telescope that weekend into a pleasant Monday night on Lux soon, Ginger. What do you have on Lux for next week, Mr. Barrymore? Well, next Monday night we plan to startle and bewilder you with one of the screen's most thrilling mysteries. It's the current 20th century Fox hit, Laura, starring Dana Andrews, Lynn Barry, Vincent Price, and Otto Kruger. Start with a strange and baffling murder. Add to it romance and suspense, and you have the sizzling ingredients of next Monday night's play. Wouldn't miss it, Mr. Barrymore. And good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks to both. More delicious meals with less work? Yes, ma'am. More delicious meals with far less work when you start cooking with Spry. Spry is the amazing new type vegetable shortening that makes shortcut methods possible. Gives lighter, better tasting cakes, tender, flaky pastries, crispy, digestible fried foods. So for better tasting meals with far less work, get S-P-R-Y, Spry. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Laura with Gene Tierney, Dana Andrews, and Otto Kruger. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 